How do you tell the story about a community that doesn't exist anymore? Do you rely on the personal stories from the people who used to live there? Do you rely on the images that survive in people's old photo albums? Or do you rely on how the media portrayed the community? Unfortunately, in history, many communities are only told by remnants of the past. This is a story of Russell City, a city that is still telling its story from old photo albums, from old newspapers, and from the fond memories of the past. Russell City is seemingly contradictory. To some, it was a slum or the shame of Alameda County. To others, it was a wonderful place to grow up because of the community atmosphere where people looked out for each other. And to others, it was both. Regardless of the differing viewpoints, Russell City and the controversy surrounding its raising is an integral part of the story of the Hayward area. As an incorporated area, Russell City was dependent on Alameda County for most services, and for the most part, Alameda County did very little to encourage growth or development in the area. As early as May 1934, the Alameda County Board of Supervisors denied funding for a proposed street improvement project because the project is designed to benefit a subdivision rather than the general public. The pattern of improvement proposed would hinder the ability of Russell City residences to improve their infrastructure even before the county set its sights on the area for an industrial park. Many of the prevailing thoughts during the 1950s was that Russell City could solve its problems if the city of Hayward would annex the community. During this period, residents of Russell City were actively working to improve Russell City and bring it to the infrastructure that it had been requiring since the 1930s. Secondly, the city of Hayward was already eyeing Russell City for an industrial development, and the eventuality annexation soon became a reality. Soon Alameda County would start acting on the side of the Hayward and S.D. Smith's reference master plan. The master plan was S.D. Smith's opinion that Russell City is an industrial location that was not meant for housing. During the 1950s, many articles came out in the media that portrayed Russell City in a negative light. In one report claimed that the houses in Russell City were no more than shacks and that there were no essential services like running water. The report also detailed the geographic conditions stating that the low elevation caused flooding in the winters. But the last damaging claim was that Russell City was a center of disease. In 1957, a grand jury took a tour of one of the members stated that the disease like scabies, lice, mumps, and chickenpox were rampant. Aside from the public reception of Russell City that played throughout the media, Russell City faced many fire outbreaks. In February 1957, according to the local newspapers, there were just four fires in just the month of February alone. Because there were so many fires in such a short period of time, many of the local residents thought that the fires were not accidental. Some believed that the county was setting fires to drive out the residents. One of the many fires that Russell City experienced even caused the death of four children during the 1950s. Towards the end of 1959, some of the Russell City residents looked to other solutions to help save their city. Some looked to incorporation rather than annexation. Beginning in 1960, Alameda County began seizing up Russell City for redevelopment and relocation of its residents. In April, the area was appraised at 140 acres and about 1,500 people were living there. In 1960, a relocation study was released claiming that only 72 Russell City families were on welfare and therefore most residents could afford housing if they were relocated and the counter-argument had been false. In the late 1950s and early 1960s, the process of relocation was off and on, but in 1963, the controversy of relocation began again. The NAACP claimed that the relocation of Russell City families would enlarge the existing ghetto conditions in the East Bay. The comments came during the redevelopment meeting at the Veterans Hall in Hayward. Oakland City Mayor stated that the same month there would be no room in Oakland for approximately 205 families that were displaced by the project. Nonetheless, the redevelopment was moved forward and many families began to leave the area. After 1963, there were no prospects for a compromise to save even a part of the residential city of Russell City. In January 1964, the Alameda County Redevelopment Agency began issuing reports on the status of the Russell City Redevelopment Project. 
The first January report stated that 59 families were removed, but as of yet, there was no demolition or cleaning out. By July 1964, only 107 families is out of 284 had remained in Russell City area. The list of relocation area had grown to include Livermore, San Leandro, Berkeley, Oakland, and the surrounding Bay Area. However, fire was the constant thorn in the side of the county. In July, an article reported that the county redevelopment agency was looking for a developer that could raise a home within 24 hours of family leaving because of so much arson was happening. The article also reported that 12 homes had burned only in six weeks. By the end of 1964, there were only 47 families left in Russell City. Most of the families had resettled in Oakland or at Hayward. In July 1963, only 30 families remained in Russell City, and the list of relocation began to grow throughout the whole Bay Area. Only a few pockets of land remained unacquired for demolition. A few months later, in September, large fires began to claim much of the city's remaining buildings. It was not until January 1967 that the last family left Russell City, and their home too, the very last one, would burn under suspicious circumstances. In 1978, former residents of Russell City began holding reunions, and the reunions are still held on Labor Day weekend and to this day.